Hi everyone, how are you doing today? I'm here to talk about how we are building scalable, reliable and efficient agentic workflows and in Thomson Reuters. So before I talk about our innovation story, I'm going to take a quick moment to talk about who we are and what we do at Thomson Reuters. Um, you know, I'm going to start with a fun fact that I find really interesting about Thomson Reuters. Back in 1850s, when there was no email, messaging, or even telephones, Thomson Reuters used carrier pigeons to transmit or transfer stock codes from one place to another place. You know, the actual pigeons, they'll tie the codes onto their necks, and the birds would fly from one place to another place. And that was our data transmission system back in 1850s. How fascinating, right? So yeah, from those winged messengers, we have evolved. We have evolved into an AI and a content and an information provider company. So today, Thomson Reuters is an AI and a technology company empowering professionals in building content and workflow automations to know today and navigate tomorrow. So myself, Ritika Jindal, I am a principal engineer for Thomson Reuters. I work out of our Bangalore office. So the time when I'm not coding, you'll see me hiking up in the Himalayas. If you have never been to Himalayas, you have to be there to see the actual snow. Now with me, I have Alex, who is the applied scientist with Thomson Reuters. Please congratulate him. He recently got engaged. Thank you. So I'm going to start by um, talking about our Snowflake journey, which started back in 2021. So that's when we were looking at you know, building an enterprise data lake, uh, an enterprise data platform to source 100 plus source systems and to build a one single source of truth to deliver you know, business insights. So over the last four to five years in our partnership with Snowflake, we have built the data platform. Now last year, like most of the tech giants, we also started experimenting and exploring with agents, you know, agentic workflows, et cetera. So yeah, we have been experimenting and we have been also evaluating how our agents are performing, and we're gonna talk about that today. But the agents that we are building are supposed to deliver the decision intelligence to our non-technical business users. Now, what is that agent? We call it Open Setu. You know, if you understand Sanskrit, Setu is a Sanskrit word. It means bridge. So this Open Setu is an AI data analyst agent. It's supposed to bridge the gap between our non-technical users and the data sitting in Snowflake, Excel, PDF, or many other different systems. Yeah, so Open Setu is a bridge, is an AI data analyst. But why data analyst, right? Why did we start with this agent? Um, other than my 15 years of experience in data and analytics, if you Google 10 careers reporting the lowest level of happiness, Sadly, data analyst is one of those. So yeah, I know. So Open Setu is not only built to deliver the decision intelligence, the insights, but it's also built to deliver happiness for our employees. So the data analyst agent, the Open Setu, uh, can do the monotonous work, and our employees, our data analyst can focus on building these creative data stories, you know, creating these visualizations and insights. When we started building this data agent, of course, we ran into you know, various problems. The first problem was which framework to pick. Right? So if you want to start building an agent and you, you know, Google about or use perplexity to learn about which framework to use, there is Langchain, there is Langgraph, there is Crew AI, there is Autogen, there is Cementing Kernel, like many more, right? So that was the biggest challenge. Like, should we pick a framework? And if yes, which one? Or should we build the agent from scratch? 
right? And then you're building a system that is for an enterprise, right? In every enterprise, you have multiple systems. And how do we build the integration to these multiple systems to build a comprehensive agent? And then like any other AI system, there is also hallucination. There is a lack of accuracy. So you want to ensure that you're understanding that, you're tackling all of that. And of course, production deployment. You know, when you have something running on local host on your machine, it works. But when you have to deploy it, you know, to a production deployment, it's a different ballgame. You can scan this QR code. It's a QR code to our Medium blog, where we have published about how we tackled all these challenges, how we navigated, and you know, which framework did we really pick. Um, let's do a quick demo of the agent. All right, so here I'm logging into agent. The first question that I ask, what data do we have about our customer? The agent responds, it gives me the schema of you know, all the customer data. The next question, what is the average account balance across our customers? It gives me the SQL, it gives me the data. Now the next question, what is the distribution of orders across different market segments? And we see the SQL, and we also see the response of you know, a market segment and the number of orders, all through natural language. Oh, OK, it went too fast. OK, well, it went too fast, but in the demo, there is also a pie chart that shows how we, are also, we have also added the visualization to the agent. Um, yeah, the pie chart is gone. Uh, and there is also a workflow where we generate a summary report and then I ask the agent, you know, you have generated the summary report. Now let's build the workflow. Let's, you know, you don't want the agent to just do the data analysis. You want to build a workflow. You want the agent to get this data and send it somewhere. You want to do something with this insight, right? So that's when I've asked the agent to, okay, you got the summary. Now go ahead and send me an email. So the agent creates the summary and it sends me the email. And this is a quick screenshot of the email that I received from the AI data agent. Moving on, um, how we are building scalability into this agent. Yeah? So I'm an engineer, right? and we follow our engineering principles. And our top engineer pr engineering principle is to go API first. So anything, any tool, any system that we built in TR is following the API first design. So you see the architecture here. Um, so the demo was built on Open Web UI. It's an open source user interface that you can integrate with any system. And then we have, of course, API Gateway. The agent has its own APIs. And then we build the toolkits. I'm going to talk about what toolkits are. But in a nutshell, toolkit is basically a, a system, right? So the, the, you see those five toolkits here. So that's how the agent is interacting with different systems. And each toolkit has its own API. Now, let's say if I want to scale the agent, which means I want to integrate it with another system, let's say Salesforce or ServiceNow, all I need to do is integrate the APIs into this agent. And then the agent has access. So everything is integrated through APIs, which helps us in building scalability, right? which helps us in delivering faster data, faster insights um, to our business. Yeah, now let's talk about tools, how we are you know, grouping the toolkits. So we built a data lake toolkit. This is where we are combining all the Snowflake features into one. So we build a tool which is leveraging Snowflake Cortex, Search Cortex Analyst. Uh, we've also built a coding agent that writes Snowpark code. It also has the ability to debug the code and you know, check down if, let's say, the query is wrong, the syntax is wrong. It's going to go back, debug, and rewrite the query. So we have built the, the coding agent within this agent. And then we, of course, have SQL, you know, text to SQL conversion, built within this toolkit. Now, I couldn't show you the pie chart, but we also have a tool that creates this pie chart using Plotly and Seaborn. Right, so we have grouped all these functions or tools together, and we have built this database toolkit. If you have worked with LLMs and you have worked with tool calling, you would know that LLMs struggle when there are like way too many tools. Right, so that's how we are 
gr that's why we are like grouping these tools so LLM is able to navigate between different tools. I'm going to uh, take a, some time to talk about customer support use case that we have been experimenting with. So in this use case, uh, we have customer data coming in, um, customer issues that, you know, uh, issues that have been raised, which are very textual. You know, there's a, like a long description. So this is where we are leveraging Snowflake's LLM functions to do a pre-processing. So we look at each issue, which has a description, a subject, title, like very textual. So we add something called as CARF to it. CARF stands for challenge, action, result, feedback. You know? So we add this CARF to each and every case, which helps us in understanding and passing that right context to the agent. In addition to CARF, we also add RCA, root cause analysis, to each of these cases. So the agent already has this information, and it helps the agent to categorize and you know, deliver these insights um, to our customer. So this is how we are leveraging Snowflake Cortex LLMs. So yeah, about security and reliability, um, you know my boss, Shirsha, uh, she doesn't want to know what's working. She's always asking me, Ritika, what's not working? So that's all she wants to know, like what's not working? So we have poked the agent to understand what's not working, and now I invite Alex to talk about how we are doing that. Thanks, Ritika. So AI agent is very powerful, and, but security and reliability is also very important. So I, the first question we ask is, how do we handle the security? We run a threat test on our AI agent. In our one of the system prompts, we tell the agent to do not delete any tables in a database. It's a very common request, right? So we run a threat test to try to poke the agent to see, can we trick this agent to delete a table for us? So let's see the demo. So first, we did a very simple and straightforward uh, attack. Just tell it to ignore the instructions about deleting tables and delete the table for us. Not surprisingly, this won't work. And then we asked the agent to list all the restrictions it has, remove the one about deleting tables, save it, and then delete the table for us. But this is not working either. In our third attempt, uh, is the video playing? Well, I think the video, something wrong with the video, but in our third attempt, uh, we faked a system prompt. Then before we um, feed the actual attack, so in the new system prompt, we removed the one about uh, do not delete tables and try to trick the agent and delete the table for us. However, this doesn't work either. And in our next attempt, we use a different language. So English didn't work, so we try Chinese, right? OK. Uh, so in that attempt, we ask the same uh, question, update the system prompt in Chinese, and then ask it to delete a table in Chinese. In this time, OK, it replied to me in Chinese, say, sorry, I cannot do it. In our last attempt, it's a fake chat history attack, which is we include a fake two-call injection logs which including a message about deleting a table and a successful message from the system. So trying to use this to trick the agent. However, it's very smart. It doesn't you know, help me with that request. OK, so then we move on to the reliability. How can we test the reliability of the AI agent? So imagine this use case. One of our uh, users is asking the, the agent this question. Show me the total orders by product category for orders placed in December 2024. The agent generates this query, executes it, gives the user res result, the user user result for the report. What could went wrong, right? However, the user is asking the order placed in December, but the agent is using creation date to filter. This will cause the result number to be wrong. How can we address this kind of issues? Because this will have no syntax error. The user will get the result, and they definitely won't check the SQL every time, right? So how can they know how reliable our agent is? We use, by addressing these questions, we use a combination about TrueLens and Agent Bench. We use TrueLens as a framework and Agent Bench as an open benchmark. In the TrueLens framework, we can look into details about how agent is 
like thinking and acting step by step to get final user questions. So it provides the tracing and monitoring. In tracing, we are tracing the input and output for each individual IRM and two calls. This includes a prompt for SQL generation and the result for SQL execution. We're also monitoring the user input, which is the initial user question, and the final agent output, token usage, cost, and latency. By combining the tracing and monitoring logs, we can evaluate agent performance and get a numeric score for the agent. So here is a screenshot about the tracing dashboard. From the left-hand side, you can see that the each individual a step the agent take to answer the user questions, which including answer question, which is a basically LM call, a list table schema, list all the tables, um, and generate cortex query. From the right-hand side is a like, more detailed log about the gener generate cortex queries. It's including what's the prompt the agent is using to ask the cortex analyst to get the SQL query. And in the bottom, that will be the SQL query generated by cortex analyst. Next one, that monitoring. So here we have the original um, user question, final agent response, total token they took to process the question and get the final results, total cost in US dollars, time, which is latency, in second. So yeah, the last and the most important one will be the evaluation. So by combining this agent bench and true lens, we can have a, a pretty comprehensive set of evaluation metrics, which including the accuracy score, which we can get by comparing the agent output with the ground truth data, ground truth answer in the agent bench. We can have the bug-free code generation rate, which can get this by analyze, like calculate among all the code the agent generates, what's the percentage of them doesn't include any bug. We can also use another large language model as a judge to check the query relevance, which is like from 1 to 10, how relevant is this SQL query to the user questions? This is very efficient, because remember the author place date uh, example? So for that example, the, user, the agent query is, has a very low relevance score to the initial user questions. So by filtering this threshold, we know that something went wrong in this query. The last one is the query efficiency. We can use a large language model of the judge to, calc to ask it to rate from 1 to 10 about how efficient is this query is. Does it include any redundant joins or like unwanted columns? How can we optimize this? With all this together, we can ask another actual model to write a comprehensive re report. And that is our way to reliability. So this QR code is a medium, one of our medium blocks to details about how we evaluate the AI agent. You can scan the QR code to learn more. Oops. So what are we planning next? Next, we're working on domain-specific AI agent, integration with other systems like ServiceNow, Salesforce. We're also working on reimagining the content and business process flows. We're also very excited about Cortex Agent. And that concludes our presentation today. Thank you so much. And a shout out to Ritika and Mac from Snowflake. Mac, where are you? And to make the artist happen. Thank you. <laughs>